Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Chaos Child. We got out of a very scary situation. Where did that pyrokinetic person go? I don't know. But we finally made it to the clinic. After the attack by the pyrokinetic woman, I'd finally fled with Aramura to Aoba dorm. I could probably get treatment for my burns here. The front door was locked. I'd been so busy running that I'd forgotten how late it was. I'd been given a key to the dorm, but I didn't usually carry it on me. But when I'd lived here, there was a spare key hidden on the grounds. I decided to look for it. Fortunately, the key was right where I remembered it. Part of me thought it wasn't a good idea to leave it in the same place all the time, but today I was grateful. As I went into the exam room, Arimara still stood hesitantly by the entrance. I motioned for her to sit in the exam chair. So. Good. I'd gotten a little used to it, but I still didn't like the idea of touching her skin. I got some medicine, some cotton wool, and some adhesive bandages off the shelf and handed them to her. Since this was a clinic, a lot of the medicines were for use by professionals, but they were labeled in clearly written Japanese, so there was no way I could screw them up. Every time a new drug came in, it was Kurosu's job to make the label and stick it on. She always said that if she didn't, Yui, Yuto, and I might take some by accident. She'd always been the type to worry about things like that. I'd always been told to make sure to straighten my shoes up when I took them off, or not to put my socks in the laundry inside out. She'd made me help with a lot of the cooking, too, didn't she? I shook my head, shocked that I was thinking about those things when something much more important was going on. The disinfected and must have stung because she was wincing. I hadn't really meant anything by it, that was just where the conversation was leading. If she was jealous of me living alone, did that mean that she wasn't getting along with her relatives? あ、言っておきますけど、別に親戚の家でいじめられてるとか、そういう昭和のドラマみたいなことはないですから。え変に誤解されても嫌だなと思って。別に誤解なんてしてない。やっぱり思ってたんですね。Yeah, I was going to say we can't make verbal excuses to her. <laughs> She'll immediately tell if we're lying. That's right, she had that power. Having her know if I was telling the truth or not made things difficult. It was probably difficult for Arimura herself to know what someone was really thinking, whether she wanted to or not. That sort of explained how she acted at school. Unless she kept things on a superficial level, acting like a goofball and telling jokes, she'd know what everyone really felt and it would crush her. Yeah, that is true. Being able to read everybody's mind all the time would really suck. Since Arimura seemed to have finished, I sat down in a chair to take care of my own injuries. And at the same time, the door in the back softly opened. Takuru? 
That's got to look weird. We come back burned. Oh, no. I'd hope that Kurosu would be asleep. No, I'd actually come here to talk to her about something important. Yeah, like, that was the whole point. But after the pyrokinetics attack, I decided against it. If she saw me injured like this, she would have worried, so I'd planned to talk to her tomorrow instead. And then she realized that there was another girl in the room. We have burns. Just go. Just do it. I wasn't out on some kind of weird late night date with her, where we take her back to my family's place. Like, this is obviously not what it looks like. We would have gone back to the damn trailer. And then we got into a big fight where both of us got hurt. But before I could say something which would probably only make her more suspicious, Kurusu saw us both and went pale. Good, thank you. I knew this was coming. Her own injury hadn't healed yet, so when I saw how worried she looked, it pricked at my heart. Kurosu grabbed the medicines I was carrying and started to patch me up. Kurosu's no nonsense attitude was enough to overwhelm even Arimura. She sat still and let Kurosu do whatever she wanted. Once she was finished, she started on me. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to the clinic. What was I supposed to tell her? I mean, like, it's killing me because we met the person that she wanted to tell us about. Just, I wish we'd just get it done. Thank you. Arimura came straight out and told her while I was hesitating. Kurosu's expression started to cloud over. Are you kidding? This is like the best possible way of getting through this. I glared at her, but Arimura just shook her head. Yup. Increasing pointless trauma and drawing things out when we don't otherwise have to. Arimura is correct. Huh? That's also true. We are terrible communicators. Oh. I guess I didn't have a choice. I told Kurosu what had just happened, carefully choosing my words so as not to scare her. While I spoke, I had flashbacks to the terror I felt during the attack and my voice started to shake, but I couldn't help that. Everything I said sounded unrealistic, even to me, but Kurosu intently listened to every word. She just sat there and listened. Arimura suddenly looked at me and spoke. Huh? Only then did I realize. I'd been so busy talking that I hadn't noticed, but something had appeared in the corner of my vision. Oh yeah, to the left. Little sword. When I remembered the terror I'd felt during the attack, had it brought this back as well? There was no mistaking it. 
出そうだ。I whispered the words myself and tried to visualize it more clearly. And then. The hazy, indistinct image began to take shape. Wow, so we could at least kind of control it. I reached out my hand toward the bizarre object. But. For some reason, I couldn't touch it. Aimer said. I mean, I kind of assumed that was obvious when we did it in the, the alley or wherever we were. An illusory sword that could only be seen with the power to make delusions real. It's possible, but I mean, really, she's after us. The, the scary thing, though, is she's probably after Serica, too, and Serica is not psychic, as far as we're aware, because we were both there in the hospital. What I've been afraid of. Had become real. That woman, her eyes, her appearance, and her flames. The burn marks on our bodies told me that this wasn't a dream, it was real. At this rate, I would be killed, like the victims in Don't Look at Me and Revolving Dead. Why was this happening to me? Kurosu suddenly interrupted our conversation. This is killing me because if she just told us about what she had wanted to say in the first place, we would look at that photo and be like, oh my god, that's her. Stunned, I leaned in towards Kurosu. I noticed earlier that something seemed a little strange about Kurosu. She told me so many times not to get involved in anything dangerous that I was sure when I told her what had happened tonight she'd freak out. That's why even when I'd fled here, I still hadn't wanted to see her. But after I told her, instead of looking angry or raising her voice, her expression was firm and resolved. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh. I felt a sudden pain in my heart. Her words reminded me of last time, when I was told that my parents were murdered. When I found out that the family rule of the Aoba dorm, that nobody kept secrets, didn't apply to me, just everyone else. When I found out I was the one person who was different from the rest of my family. And I knew Kurosu remembered it too. She had almost brought herself to the verge of saying something, but her memories came back and stopped her. She kept opening and closing her mouth, only to finally fall silent. I almost never saw her like this. I balled my hands tightly into fists, as if I was trying to tell this to myself, too. Was I just imagining things, or did Kurosu's eyes get a little wet? I couldn't bear to look at her, so I continued. 
何が何だか分かんないだろうそそうねそうよねごめんなさい And then she slowly started to speak. This is what she said. Kondo no chicken. What does she want m u k a n k e a n i n o I never even expected that. Kurusu was involved in the case. What did she mean? Konomae Anata Tachina Shinobicon that the you be in there? Eh, Tokyo Sogo be in. ええ、その病院の地下のこと私前から知っていたほうは I couldn't believe what I was hearing It was so sudden and surprising that I couldn't even follow it The basement under AH Tokyo General Hospital She knew about that terrifying place Why? How? 昔千里がね南沢千里のことよ南沢千里I had to stop myself from reaching out and grabbing her by the shoulders どどうして彼女それはそのねクルスパーズンルクトウェイ And then she showed me the phone in her hands. There was a picture on the phone. A happily smiling boy and two girls. The picture was old, but I recognized one of the girls as Kurosu and the boy as Kawahara. And there was a girl with them who had very gloomy eyes. It was without a doubt the girl whose data I had seen in the facility, the one called Senri Minamisawa. So, so cool. 思い出した南沢って名前どこかで聞いたことがあると思ったんだ It was during the culture festival Kawahara had said 特に俺とあともう一人地震で死んじまったけど南沢ってやつはいつもクルスと一緒にいた三人でよくつるんでたんだよ川原君が言ってた南沢って子が一緒だったってそうこの写真を撮った頃の私たちはいつも一緒に遊んでいたのよ Senri Minamisawa who had been subjected to those awful human experiments used to be Kurosu's friend? Senri はね毎週日曜日にあの病院に通っていたわじゃあ、クルスは The back of my throat had gone dry and hurt terribly クルスはあそこで何が行われていたのかも知ってたのか<笑>クルス bit her lip and slowly nodded 当時子供だった私にはどうしようもなかったのそれが悔しくて c u r s o r looked down. Her face was twisted with pain as if she was being tortured. She was a girl with a strong sense of right and wrong, knowing that her friend was being experimented on must have been terrible for her. Did Kurosu maybe go through the same trauma that I did? クルス有村さんお願い全部教えて<笑> Was that really the right thing to do? I'd put Kurosu in danger before and now I was sending her down a dangerous path again 仕方ないですねちょ待ってくれ有村 I tried to stop Arimura, but Kurosu cut me off. Ne, Takuru. Kyo, Anata Tachini Kegao Saseta no Matarena no ka. Sorewa Wakarana, eh? Keto. Matao so tekuru kano sen arun de shaw? 
何も知らないままじゃ私は何もしてあげられないただうろたえるだけで何もできないそんなの嫌なのよだから全部聞かせて私にも羨ましいですねうんあいえ何でもないですでクルス先輩に話しちゃってもいいんですかあ、うん、あ。I でも有村クルスを巻き込む前に一つだけ聞いてもいいか私にですか僕はお前のことまだよくわからない正直信じていいのかどうかも That is an interesting point なるほどそうでしょうねでもなんていうか今は悪いやつじゃないような気がしてるんだだから聞いておきたいんだけどだから何をですお前は少なくともその僕らの敵じゃないんだよな<笑>お前のせいで僕の大事な誰かが死んだりしないよな<笑> I remember a thought for a moment as she looked at me and Kurosu in turn The fact that she even has to consider this is worrying And then まあさっきは宮代先輩に助けてもらいましたし恩をあだで返すってのもどうかと思うんで誓っときます I mean I'll take what I can get but that seems kind of like a dodge like good thing we were attacked or her answer might have been different 私のことは先輩たちの味方だと思ってて問題ないですよそっかおっとただしベタベタ慣れ合ったりするのとか大嫌いなんでその辺はよろしく Then she smiled just a little. That may have been the first time I've seen a real smile from her. Oh! We're moving. <sighs> Shinjo looked up at the huge white building and sighed loudly. AH Tokyo General Hospital. After Kurosu's report, he decided to visit it himself. It was almost midnight. Visiting hours were long over, and he didn't have an official warrant. He was here entirely of his own volition. After Kurus's report? Not Kunosato's? Was that an error? But as he saw it, he was never getting a warrant the usual way, so this was his only shot. Normally, he'd want to slowly painstakingly build up a case, but it seemed to him that searching this hospital was so important that there just wasn't time to spare. So he's gonna go in alone and die horribly. Kunosato Mio no Hanashi ga hontou de aru koto, mazu tashikameru. So sereba, eijo nante ikura demo de ryo ni naru hazda. After his own investigations, he'd found that something strange had started happening here in 2007, two years before the earthquake. At the time, there was a treatment facility in Shibuya called the Arc Heart Medical Association. Is that what that is? Arc Heart? AH? That was involved with some kind of cult. On the surface, it was a mental health clinic staffed with talented doctors from university hospitals. And I'm sorry, give me a second, because I might be way off base on this. There's no AH. Maybe it really is Arc Heart. Okay, alright. There was no way to know what they'd actually been doing, but evidently some people had suspected that they were brainwashing troubled patients. But suddenly the facility was reborn as a hospital with a non profit assisted living facility. And all the doctors that Arc Heart Medical had fired were rehired at AH Tokyo General Hospital. Oof. And then six years ago, there was the New Generation Madness. The fifth victim in that case? Fumio Takashina, the victim of the so called brain dead case. Yeah. Who'd been kept alive for a week after his brain was removed? I'm sorry, is that a, th is that a thing? Is that even remotely possible? He'd worked at AH Tokyo General Hospital. Oh god. <laughs> There was too much that seemed suspicious. And then he shook his head. 
Do it your own way. That's what they would have said. Either way, if he could get proof of what was in this facility's basement, the case would take a whole different turn. Even if there was something big lurking in the shadows behind this case, if he presented incontrovertible proof, the police would have no choice but to act. It wasn't just about the facility, after all. There were a lot of people involved, too. The lives and dignity of the victims who'd been turned into test subjects also mattered. Every year, almost 100,000 people went missing. If some of them had been forced into these experiments, that was a big problem. His voice was somehow relaxed, yet driven, as he headed into the hospital. He learned and memorized the location of the facility from Kunosato. He snuck in from the ER loading zone and headed to the basement. The temperature there was clearly different from the areas above. From that of the areas above. And then he went into the autopsy room. Or went to it. Not there yet. Now he's in it. He opened the breaker box and saw the card reader inside. He held out the card key that Kunosato had given him. Damn, this is very fast. And he heard the sound of an opening door. I hope Kunosato told him about the blind woman with the stroller that he has to be quiet around. There was a hidden staircase in the back of the autopsy room. A part of him hadn't believed it until he'd seen it for himself, but now he was essentially sure. A normal hospital wouldn't need something like this. Shinjo stopped for a moment to take a breath, then headed down the stairs. This is where I would call for somebody else. There was an old hallway at the bottom. It smelled of mold and dust. When he turned on his pen light, he saw that it was an old facility and the walls were falling apart. If no one visits a building, it rots away. Unless someone uses it every day, it won't last long. But this place was different. It was old, but he was nearly certain someone was using it. Shinjo followed the directions that Kunosato had given him as he headed toward his goal. His first stop was the monitoring room, which would have critical information on the facility. He wanted the data on the computer there. And then he wanted to find the room where the victims of the experiments were being kept. Watch out for Stroller Woman! He turned down many corridors as he headed for his destination. The cell-like rooms he saw on the way concerned him, but they could wait for later. Right now, his biggest job was to get the evidence he needed. Shinjo finally found the spot he was looking for. He used his card key to unlock the door. Then he swallowed and put his hand on the doorknob. <laughs> When he got inside, he saw... I love stuff like that. We have no idea what it was. And he just starts running. You know it's bad. That's good, um... I don't know if ambience is the word. But it builds tension very nicely. He quickly ran to the other room, the prison where Uki Yamazoe had kept the test subjects. He quickly found the room and flung open the door. And then he stood still in astonishment. There was... Nothing there. That's creepy. No victims, no beds, none of the things that Kunosato had told him about. The monitoring room had been empty too. There were no security cameras, no computers, nothing at all. Did they abandon ship? All that remained was the simple fact that there was nothing left at all. That's very scary. I hope we don't get killed in an empty room. Wow, so just, uh... Enough of that scene, I guess. Well, for now, it's time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We actually got the information from Kurosu and gave her our own. I really thought there would be unnecessary drama that made it take way longer, but we just got it done. Thank goodness. 
and Shinjo went and investigated the secret hospital basement and found nothing? I hope that's all he finds. It would be a shame for him to die in some dead-end room. More on that later, I guess. Until next time, everyone.